saw the story about you uh, acting as Jalen Hurts down there with the team. Now, I didn't, I didn't know about that rule that uh, college teams can bring some of the old guys back and practice. Do you actually put the pads on and go, like, hit? Or is this kind of just, like, go through the motions thing? Man, I actually took a couple shots. I pulled my hamstring on Thursday. <laughs> you know what man? I'm telling you, it's getting up there, man. Wow. That's what happens when you don't do squats in a year, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. You can't try to sprint without squatting after a while. They, they, <laughs> them, them young boys will catch up to you. Now, in that, in your role doing that, what are you trying to show those guys? Honestly, I'm just trying to give them a, a edge competitively. Um, you know, I still make all the throws. I still run. So, to give them as close as a look as I can. Uh, Coach Venables is real about who he wants to run the scout team, so he doesn't let any of the backups do it because he says that they'll move with the tempo fast enough. So in regards, he starts to take over, and he just can't throw the damn football the way I can. <laughs> so I need to get out there. Yeah, That's funny. That is funny. Hey, Taj, you know, we had on um, Coach Bowden, obviously part of the ACC network now and has been for a few years. We've had Tommy on a few times. We had him on, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, Teak, something like that, maybe even inside of that, maybe yeah, two, weeks. two weeks. ago. And we asked about some of the early, you know, concerning – performances by the Tigers. Didn't look particularly good the first game against right. Auburn. Didn't look good against Troy, that's for sure. Uh, lost to a Pitt team who's good but not great. At any point, uh, what did you attribute that to? A, a hangover from the game against Alabama? Uh, maybe a little overinflated ego? What was happening early for the Tigers? What did you see? I think it was expectations. I think that it was coming into the year, coming off of the year they had last year and, and coming so close to beating Alabama. You know, there was speculation and there was this, this this sense in the air that they wanted to go out there and score 80 points a game. You know, everybody's claiming that they're going to be the best offense in the ACC history, that they're going to be prolific, that there, there's not going to be one close game this year. But the thing is, though, that target on that back gets a lot bigger. The more you win, the more you're successful. And I really think that they were just pressing a little bit too much not going out there doing the routine things, not doing the things that got them in the position where they were at last year. I think it was just really just them trying to calm down and really get a sense of of who they are and the, the camaraderie back together. I mean, there's a lot of talent on that team. There's a lot of ego on that team. But there's, it's not an individual team. There's not one player on the team that's greater than another. So to understand that and to understand the mission as a as a team, as a unit, that you need to go out there and do everything you can for that guy beside you to get the best results that you want to. I think it's something that they had to figure out along the way. I think they picked it up. Obviously, there's the thing is peaking too soon. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they hit their stride at the right time, especially after that pit low. Uh, and really just trying to – I think it was a weight lifted off of their shoulders, honestly, especially talking with the guys. So, you know, after that, you know, those guys picked it up, um, started to trust one another. And really had to look each other in the eye and say, I'm here for you. And this is why they're in the position that they're in right now. It's interesting. Talking to Taj Boyd, former standout at Clemson, 2012 ACC Offensive Player of the Year, uh, big time resume in college. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Now, Taj, we all know uh, the, what's at stake for Nick Saban and his sixth, his pursuit of his sixth. This is, this is Coach Dabo's uh, first opportunity, actually, second opportunity to get one. Obviously, missed it last year. What, what makes him such a great coach? Because there's something about him. Like, when you talk to him, you feel it. We've had him on our show a, a few times. It's just this, there's this it that he has. What, what, what is that specifically? Well, I think when you look at Coach Shea, when you look at Coach Sweeney, they're polar opposites. Um, Coach Sweeney's an extrovert. You know, he's really out there spontaneous, a great interview, uh, and really great leader, a great players coach. And then Coach Saban is more of a reserve, really intense. I got a chance to sit down with CJ Mosley and Derek Henry yesterday and talk to those guys about what it was like to play for him. And to say he, he, he cares for you. He shows his affection in a different way. He expects the most from you. But, you know, not like Coach Sweeney, he, he doesn't get that excited about winning games because for them it's something that they're supposed to do. Um, whereas why I think players come to Clemson is because of the fun of it. Um, but Coach, Coach Saban is arguably the greatest college football coach of all time. Um, He's developed some unbelievable talent out there and put together some unbelievable teams. And we look at who he is and, and the route that he's taken. I mean, the coaching stint in the NFL. I was watching some old Peach Bowl 
when he was coaching at LSU, he was, he acted the exact same way. And mm. that's just who he is. That's just his demeanor. Um, and his players are similar to him, just like the the character and the culture of the team that's at Clemson are very similar to Coach Sweeney. I'm very outspoken, not scared to, to speak their mind. And I think that's what you get when you look at both parties. Taj, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, what is your opinion on how you think the new dynamic uh, running the offense for the Tide from a quarterback's position, from that perspective, what do we see? We know that Lane, Co- Lane Kiffin is out. We know that Sarkeesian's in. And we know that Steve obviously has a great grasp on the playbook. Nobody's going to deny that. But, you know, yeah. people are different. And people decipher and deliver messages differently. The way right. it's sent. You know, how does that play out? That's what I'm interested to see. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not going to going to say that the offense is going to be completely different because you can't, not in a week, you can't change the whole dynamic of it. Uh, the one thing that I'm interested to see, though, it's how the players respond to Sark. How the players respect Sark in that huddle. If they hit adversity, you know, what's the best of being relayed? What's the tone of the team? Because, I mean, that's that's a totally different dynamic. I mean, Lane Kiffin has been there for a while. He was there for a while. Um, and you say what you want to say about him, some of his off-the-field antics, but players believe in Lane Kiffin. They believe in the play calls that he, he put together, and they respected him as a leader. And that's where Sark, I mean, in this new role, you know, you're going out there relatively new to this this group of players. You know, they haven't been in the battlefield with him before. So that's that's the thing that's interesting. I don't well, know if I already made that move. Yeah. So that's facts. Because if adversity does hit and he doesn't know how to deal with it, then this team can crumble underneath him. And especially, you know, you got Jalen Hurts out there, a freshman, very composed, very great demeanor. Um Unbelievable talent. But essentially, as a quarterback, you're an extension of the coach on the field. So if Sark isn't on his game, if he's not up to, to par mentally, then that reflects directly on Jalen Hurts, too. Jalen Hurts, too. So, I mean, it, it's a it's a whirlwind, and we'll see how, how it handles, you know. Let's talk about Taj Boyd, Tiki, and Tierney. Hey, Taj, do you think the Clemson defense um, can hold up against the run game that Alabama's going to throw at them? Because they got two good backs there. And obviously we'll talk about the offense on both sides. But, I mean, defensively is where I think this game will be won, whether it's Alabama or Clemson. Can Clemson's hold up? I believe so. I mean, obviously that's the key to the game uh, is within the trenches. But Clemson's defense knows that they have their work cut out for them. I mean, you look at the way both Scarborough finished in that last game, 19 carries, a buck 80, touchdown on the ground, and, Jalen Hurts is very involved in the run game. I mean, that's the dynamic that he brings to the table. A uh, very tough kid, very strong. But if they can stop the run and force Jalen Hurts to beat you through the air, I don't know if he can do that just yet at this moment. Yeah, I, I don't um, think he can. I mean, you know a million times more. Yeah. I, I don't see it, though. But, you know, you never know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not yet. So I, no. I mean, it, and he might come out and play the game of his life, and I think that's what it's going to come to if he has to do do that through the air. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've been challenged enough to the point where can a team outscore them? I don't think they had to face that problem all year outside of, like, the old misses and things of that nature. Um, But you look at the Clemson offense and how explosive they are, and what if Clemson gets up 14 up? Does I'm, Alabama have the firepower to, to battle back? I don't think so. I'm with you. I don't think they're that much of an explosive offense. I agree. Hey, we don't have a lot of time. Give me 25, 30 seconds. I'm sure you saw the news about an hour or so ago. Mitch Trubisky from your conference yeah. going to go to the NFL. How is he going to? How does he translate to Sundays? Do you like him? Uh, there's things I like about him. There's things that I don't. I mean, obviously, this quarterback class is kind of weak from an overall standpoint, so it's a good year for him to come out. But, I mean, I don't think he has enough starts under his belt to go out there and be a complete NFL quarterback, just to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he has the upside. He has the physical. But he doesn't have the experience. And I think that relates a lot more than what people give it credit for. Is he smart? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a smart kid. You know, um, don't think he had the best outlet in his last game. He had some good throws, made some bad decisions. But, again, I mean, I think you're taking a risk uh, for that fact. I mean, he's six three and a half, six four, whatever he is, 200-something, can run. But – you know, again, I, I just don't see the franchise right now. 